Howdy, and welcome back to my Let's Play series. This is episode 13, and let's get to using power. This seems like this is just a, a almost stereotypical feed the beast view, because I've got lava dripping right here, water dripping. Um, I almost exposed electrical wiring beside the water dripping. Then I've got water, steam, fuel, and oil tubes or containers or pipes or tanks visible and it's just a wide variety of all the different sources of energy in Feed the Beast and you know, I'm just amused how visible all of it was and how compact it was all together but anyway got our boiler it's almost warmed up so at this point the amount of fuel that I'm using is just so low that I pretty much got free energy. So I uh, moved back the steam turbine one block so that it, I can move the put some frames here instead of on front so that I've, I've got a face of the boiler exposed and I can still get in here and get to the steam turbine. So it's actually a, a relatively minor change. Now one thing that that does is it makes it so that the back end of the steam turbine is visible through the edge of the I could you know land but on the edge of the frame which shouldn't be an issue I don't know off the top of my head what the blast resistance for a, a steam turbine is but considering it has still blocks in its construction I would hope that it's pretty decent and probably in fact better than the frames. So we have almost free energy. Time to start using some of that. So I've got a MFE and a handy thing I, I discovered was that if you have your rotor in here and the MFE fills up, the steam turbine automatically shuts down. So there's a lot of uh, automatic intelligence in with that. And I noticed that whenever I moved the steam turbine back, it actually reduced the amount of steam that it was pulling in. So two blocks touch or one block touching the boiler up here was only using about half output. So I put another uh, a gold waterproof wire uh, cape pipe right here so that it can feed in a little bit more. It's been averaging about uh, 60 to 70 steam. Uh, so, the steam pipe may actually have higher priority than the boiler. So if I have more steam pipes running off of here, which I probably eventually will, to power other uh, megajoule powered machines, then uh, the steam turbine will get a little bit of, of priority based on just that one goad pipe, but the majority of it is still coming from being in contact with the boiler right, right here. Okay, so first thing first, let's upgrade our furnace. So, we want the induction furnace. The induction furnace is made by a advanced ma machine block surrounded by copper and an, an electronic furnace, electric furnace in the middle. Advanced machine block is a machine block, advanced alloy, and carbon, carbon plates. So, well, I was hoping that I already had some. Hmm. Curious, real fast. I don't think you can get carbon plates out of charcoal. No. I know you couldn't make diamonds out of charcoal, but I figured I'd check. So let's get some, if I'm facing the right direction, let's get some coal and start uh, macerating that. So while we're working on that, we need some advanced alloy, which uh, bronze, refined iron, and tin. Tin, I've got a ton of find iron I could use some more so I'll throw a 
16 in there for now. So refined iron. Helps if I'm going the right direction. So refined iron top, bronze, and then tin. Bronze is three copper. Hmm, gonna need some copper. That gets us four, and we need, we actually need six. And put the okay, and that's handy that that has the purity symbol. I'm, it's a little bit tricky to find. So we need one, and I can go ahead and throw that in the compressor. I was in the middle of making more diamonds. I wasn't really remembering that the minimum stone could min min um stone can make it out of gold. So what are you getting? Where are you getting eggs? There should be no chickens. That's an where are you? The issue I've been having with my wooden golem is he can see through frames, so he will jump down and go off on his own and get stuck somewhere. I don't know where he is. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and I've started growing some cocoa beans, because I had the wood from way back in episode 2. The, the cocoa beans and the wood from the jungle way back over there. So, I'm not actually sure if that's ripe. I think so. I don't know. I'll let it age just a little bit more. I'm... Not really any rush, just thought I would get that started. And you're just lost and confused. So stay up here. Not sure what's going on there, but I know that if I get too close to that smoke, it'll catch me on fire. Okay, so I've got coal dust, I can make some raw carbon fibers, and then make raw carbon mesh, and throw that in a compressor. So I'll grab more of this. I think I need eight. That'll get me a carbon plate or a carbon. Nope, carbon plate. Okay, we've got the electric furnace wrenched up from the ground, an advanced ma machine block, and surround that with copper. And we now have an induction furnace. So place that there, and it'll charge up. And since I've got a little bit of energy to burn, and since I've got a little bit of energy to burn, I'll just go ahead and make a lever, and just mount a lever to the top of that. So now it'll heat up, 
And once it's fully heated up, it'll only draw one EU a tick, which, assuming I just don't, I don't leave this alone for ages, shouldn't be any issue. So once it does heat up, it'll cook through items much faster. Okay. Second item I'd like to, to make would be a recycler. Recycler is a compressor, dirt, refined iron, and glowstone. Since I don't want to take uh, apart the compressor I already have, I'll just go ahead and make a new one. Okay, let's try that again. And we're good. So the issue was there was one of the six blocks of the steam turbine that did not have a frame touching it. And it was this one right here because most of the others were on top of frames except for I had cleared out this row. This one right here was fine because there's a column of frames above it. And this one right here is fine because there's a wall of frames to the left of it. The one in the middle there So that's what happens when you move pipes as they're pumping. Well, still getting topped on, on water, which is the important fluid. And as soon as it needs oil again, or fuel, that should clear up. But anyway, we're moved forward for uh, three, so I can start the dig program again. And what I've been doing just because it's less of an inconvenience. Since I'm already mostly in the land anyway, at least on that side, I've just been putting uh, blocks of dirt along the side of my boat so that I've been, my quarry has been relatively dry. And the issue is whenever there is water source blocks that can somehow manage to get touched by the top, or po uh, top part of the frame quarry, it'll bring up the water source blocks back up possibly even flowing water. I'm not sure what all is causing what all issue. Uh, I'm going to top up, top up on my jetpack and go down there and look in some of those caves that the quarry opened up. And I get back with you once I've gotten more copper. And as just a little aside, here's about as fast as the uh, fully warm induction furnace will go through anything. So, and it's actually extremely efficient with energy as well because the amount of energy it uses is based on how long it takes for it to cook, not how, sorry, not how much of it is or it's not set like that. I have glowstone here somewhere. So, two refined iron and one glowstone. And I don't really have too much of a rhyme or reason on my machines, just basically macerator, furnace, generic. So now that I've got this, I can somewhat productively start getting rid of cobblestone. I'm not sure why I'm starting there when I could get plenty enough cobblestone already. You can put cobblestone here, or you could put uh, cobblestone in sand or whatever else. And it'll keep trying to put the cobblestone in, and whenever the cobblestone is empty, it'll go put it in sand in, or whatever else is next. So you can basically increase this up to about... Uh, it gives it about five slots of input, so especially since with the limited amount of space and the mechanics of frames that I'm not going to be doing too much um, specialized automa automation, this lets me basically dump a bunch of minerals in, or materials in, to turn into scrap, 
that I don't really have to worry about it anymore. Okay, I've got my tin plates complete, so I can make an empty t uh, tin can. Or apparently, I can make three of them. I only need uh, one right now, and I can get blue paint. I think I can redip. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to actually make a new paintbrush. And I get a paintbrush. Paintbrush with blue paint. And I get a blue paintbrush. Okay. Pneumatic pipes further. And I'm really getting tired of you going down there. Anyway, pneumatic pipes, you're going to be standing right there because it's as close as you can get. So now blue is the color of recycling. So what I'm going to do is go over here and add blue. That's like how you should be able to use a blue paintbrush to indicate that that should go in blue. So now, whenever cobblestone fills up, the restrictor pipe will make this a valid target. So, so the sorting machine will paint that blue. So this will be the only location, valid location for cobblestone after that. And save myself a little bit of trouble and do the exact same thing as saplings. Saplings can go there. I haven't had any issue yet with saplings. But now that that is done, I can turn this back on. So, cobblestone is full. It, it goes to the restrictor pipe, gets sorted, sorted to blue, and gets added to here. Okay, and well, if I thought hurting you would make you learn, so back, I can go back up here and return my wayward wood golem back to his normal location. It's about most of the electronic stuff I wanted now, I could work on a matter fab or a mass fabricator, in which case I'd probably just simply drop him right here think he can absorb power from there. Or I could put him here so that he's throttled a little bit. I think I like that idea better. Is just place him right here so that he's throttled by this low voltage. Because really I'm not going to be in any rush to get quantum armor or anything like that. Yeah. So let's see what we need for a mass fabricator. And uh, Direwolf 20s back. So, Lapatron Crystal, which I have a ton of Lapaton. Glowstone, which I have a ton of. I, mean, I can make it right now, I just... Eh, let's go ahead and do that. So I need four circuits. Okay, a resupply and minor redesign of my rubber farm and I'm back with some rubber. So I need one, two, three, four. And that should be enough for oh. Probably help. This gets me enough uh copper insulated wire for uh four circuits. I won't even have to come back for that. And just... Then I immediately upgrade two of those to advanced circuits. So, glowstone, redstone, and lapis. So the... I need a diamond, surround it with redstone. 
Probably still out of diamonds, but easy enough to fix. So, four gold. Get to me a diamond. Diamond. Surrounded with redstone. Get to me an energon cable, or energy cable. Ca uh, crystal. Then surround that with Lepis and my two ordinary uh, circuits, and I think I actually used just just used all my free lepis, but so six lepis, and I've got a lapiton crystal. So. For glowstone and advanced machines, which I just made for the induction furnace. So I will make the advanced machines off camera and come back when I'm ready to put it all together. And after some crep, if I could speak, after some compressing, we now have the carbon plates and the advanced alloys to make two advanced machine blocks. And still forgot to grab the glowstone. Four, go four glowstone corners, Lapatron cable, two advanced machine blocks, and one ad or two advanced circuits, and we get a mass fabricator. Uh, Greg Tech people probably are, are are well familiar that the fact that this recipe is changed for you. So I can place this here. And let me real quickly grab a lever so I can shut it off. Otherwise, that's going to drain my battery very quickly. Well, as quickly as it can, all things considered. Is that done? And Okay, I believe that's off. Flip the switch. Okay, there we go. We have a mass fabricator. Now, this is basically just going to be how I'm burning some of my ex excess energy. Let me sneak in and put that up in there. Now, this should, once it equalizes, about 70%, just due to the fact that it's got one corner touching and a goad pipe on top. And as it does that, it should... Okay, I was hoping it would start using some of this excess, but I'm not overly worried. Because the amount of damage that the rotor takes is based on the proportion of output percentage. So if this doesn't max out, it just means that my rotor will save a little bit. So it should be ingesting 100 EU a tick and outputting out 128. So this is very slowly dropping off. And I've got EU matter. Or UU mat matter. Now I'm going to very quickly burn through my reserves, so let me grab my Not the most optimal setup, but for as little space as I have on this boat, I'm happy with it. And I believe we're at a pretty good wrapping up point. So, I've got uh, sufficient objects to use my uh, energy. I've got a couple more uh, machines I didn't have before, a recycler, a mass fabricator, and this uh, induction furnace. All of which are a little bit thirsty for energy, but I've, I've got it sufficiently under control. So I'm gonna basically say that my IC2 power is pretty well utilized. So next episode, I'm going to pretty up uh, my boat some more 
as well as go uh, child proof, golem proof this, because I'm getting a little bit tired of you, yes you, getting downstairs and running around with eggs thinking you're trying to be helpful. So, thank you very much, and see you next time!